We've got the first squad announced then for the Rugby Championships this weekend. And of course, the first squad of the week is always named by South Africa. Rassi Erasmus likes to get his business done nice and early. And there it is. And the headline, of course, is who's wearing number 10? Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu. When I saw that, do you know what my instant reaction was? It was, um, I thought about that scene in the American office, that the fire drill episode where um, <laughs> there's the, it's happening, it's happening. And that's every Springbok fan as soon as that team was announced. It is happening. It is Sasha time. Uh, we are, well, we're ushering in a new fly half overlord. And I personally welcome it. I've been raving about this guy for a while now, obviously. But I've been boring my friends about how he's going to be a world player of the year in the future. I've got a friend who's in Cape Town who was telling me about this guy a long time ago. And he said, however good you think Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu is, he's, he's much better than that. A, a rare and very, very special talent. Feels kind of Dan Carter-esque. And the, the mad thing is, I actually don't think he would be overawed by that comparison. I think he'd just kind of go, yeah, and he'd own it. And that's what's really impressive about this guy is the mentality. And I cannot wait to see how he goes in his very first start for the Springboks in Brisbane, where it's not been a happy hunting ground for South Africa. But the other headlines, because it's not all about Sasha, uh, and he is that kind of guy. He's going to be known just as Sasha, isn't he? It's like Beyonce, Madonna, Sasha. Sasha FM, my favourite radio station as well. Preset number one in the car next to... <laughs> Next to Lacanio AM. That'd be my other favourite radio station. Um, yeah, the other headline, Elric Lowe getting his first start for the Springboks in that number eight jersey, which is exciting to see as well. Malcolm Marks being fit to take his place on the bench. That's a bonus. He must have some kind of Wolverine-esque um, ability to recover from injury, Malcolm Marks. And new blood on the bench as well with Gerhard Steenerkamp and Ben Jason Dixon, who've been involved, but now proper test match in the rugby championship and they are involved and they've both done very well what i really like about that is that there is new blood which they needed to be and rassi rasmus has said you know with with a, a little eye on 2027 they have to think about evolving and rejuvenating this springbok squad but i love the fact it's it's not wholesale changes Quite often you see this after a World Cup happens, and I don't know if it's the same in South Africa or New Zealand or Australia or Argentina, but I can tell you in England, what always happens after a Rugby World Cup is loads of fans go, right, get anyone over 30 out of the team and get the kids in. Let's start building for the future. Happens every time like clockwork. And I never like that. And I'm, I'm a massive fan of keeping a good team together and introducing new players into an established side. And that is what has happened with this Springbok side. You've got a squad packed with World Cup winners, double World Cup winners in many cases, and you've just drip fed one forward, one back, and a couple on the bench. And what I like about that is that is how you get the best out of the new players that you've introduced. That's how you give them the most opportunity to deliver what they're capable of by surrounding them with a really well-established side. And the side overall, even with those four newer faces, is still averaging 55 caps a man. So this is a seriously experienced, highly talented squad. But like I say, a little bit of new blood in there. Let's go through the team then. And as ever, your thoughts in the comments down below. What were your thoughts when you saw um, our, our, our fly half Lord and Saviour, Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu? <laughs> on the park how do you feel about Elric Lowe uh, what do you make of Quacker Smith back in his his uh, super position his superpower as that impact man off the bench it just a lot of these selections just make a lot of sense to me and it feels like the, the selections are done with common sense and based on form as well so the, the front five picks itself without Franco Mostert RG Snayman gets the chance to maybe make that starting job his own uh, big game for him a big couple of games for him, you'd feel. And uh, the back row, you've got two absolute legends of rugby in Sia Khaleesi and Peter Steftatoy. Either side of a new face, making his fifth cap, but his first start, Elric Lowe, the sheriff. And he's just going to carry hard and smash people all day long. Really industrious, massive engine, looking forward to see him go. And he will know, just as um, you know, the rest of the pack will know, there are reinforcements. It's a 6-2 split. 
on the bench there are three loose forwards, which is a bit of a change and feels a lot better than in the Ireland match when I couldn't quite understand the selection of two locks on the bench when it was Snayman and Murat. And it does feel like I was just assuming Salman Murat would be in because it seems like he was kind of the one of the new golden boys and one of the chosen ones uh, moving forward. And I'm sure he'll still be around the Springbok squad and will get many caps. But if, if it's a form selection. Ben Jason Dixon is in, utility forward, can slot in second row, probably will slot in back row. And I talked about this last week, didn't I? This does open up the door a little bit wider for Peter Steph Toy to be back in the engine room in the in the lock position because whenever there is a 6-2 split or occasionally a 7-1 split, ordinarily it's Peter Steph Toy that is the one player or one of two players who plays the full 80 minutes. And I, I fully expect that when Ben Jason Dixon comes on into that flank position, Peter Steph Toy will be shunted up into the engine room. And, I mean, not too bad an option. It's where he started his career. Could be where he finishes his, his career as we look ahead towards 2027. Um, yeah, so the pack picks itself. Three Lucy's on the bench. Quacker Smith back in that role is is just dynamite. Ben Jason Dixon, class operator. And uh, yeah, Gerhard Steenkamp with no Stephen Kitts off. And that is the thing you have to remember is that the players that are unavailable and who could come back in future, Stephen Kitts off being one of the, the headline acts there, uh, but there's there's more than that. There's uh, Franco Moster, Lou Diaka. Uh, there is Faf de Klerk, Damian Willemse. I guess the question is, how many of those guys are actually going to get back in? The players that are in the jersey now have got the opportunity, like Elric Lowe could make the jersey his. Jasper Visa is another one. He could shut Jasper Visa out. He could shut Evan Ruiz out moving forward. Cam Hanekom might have something to say about that in the future. But the shirt is Elric Lowe's and he can own it. That's exactly what happened with Dwayne Vermeulen. He took his opportunity and then never, ever looked back. And two World Cups later, he's uh, part, of the coaching, part of the coaching team. Uh, so, back line. Kubis Reinach is chosen at nine. When I was doing my player power rankings the other day for Scrum Half, uh, which are all in the feed, by the way, my ranking of the top 10 players in the world in every position, 10 to 1, I was really surprised to find out that Grant Williams has only ever worn the number nine shirt once in his entire Springbok career. Only one time has he started at scrum half. I mean, he's a perfect utility man off the bench, but it does just make you wonder whether he will whether he will be trusted to have that starting job. Maybe it'll change in future. Maybe, maybe even the next game against Australia, he might get the starting gig, but he's got an opportunity off the bench to prove himself, and I'm sure he'll make another impact as well. Uh, Sasha, obviously fly half, very, very exciting. His goal kicking was mentioned uh, in the quotes about his selection and rest assured every time he takes a penalty or a conversion in the game at the weekend there will be a camera fixed on Andre Pollard so that just in case Sasha misses one of them trust me you'll see this in fact like if, if this was part of a, a little rugby championship drinking game have a drink every time the camera pans to Andre Pollard when Sasha is kicking it will happen all the time although I'm not so sure Sasha's going to miss that many because his kicking is pretty flawless. Uh, I guess we can talk about the style of rugby that, that will come with Sasha being in the 10 position. I think Andre Pollard quite often gets thought of as just a kind of pragmatic structure kicking 10. He is much more than that. He does have a running game. He can take it flat to the line. He has got good distribution skills. It's just Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu has got a little something extra, a little bit of stardust and X factor. And, it, well, he's got the opportunity now. I'm going to be... Well, I guess one question that just popped into my head there with Sasha being the Springbok 10. What, what's going to happen with the Stormers next month? Because Marnie Libox has been the, the 10 there and Sasha's been filling in at centre, fullback when needed, um, basically everywhere but 10. Will that change? Uh, here's one thing for you. I'm hoping, planning, to get John, Dob John Dobson, Dobbo, on the channel when I go to Cape Town to watch the New Zealand tests later this month. So I can have a word with him about that. And I'm still, yes, I've been saying this for months. I'm still trying to pull off Dion Faree, that the man I want more than anyone else to, to, to be on the channel. And um, yeah, I'm working on that. I'm working on it. But if you want to follow my travels in South Africa and on the rugby championship, hit subscribe in the channel. 
Uh, as for the rest of the back line, it's world class, it's World Cup winning, and it picks itself. Kirtley Arenser and Colby, awesome on the wing. Deal Ende and Creel, as good as it gets. Vili Larue uh, making cap number 96 on this one, closing in on that 100. And uh, yeah, he'll get that in time for Damien Valenza to return. And well, they've got options, they've really got options. Um, but style. What do you expect to see the style? So in that first test against Ireland, they hardly ever kicked the ball and just played coast to coast and kept possession. In the second test, it was a lot more like the, the World Cup winning Springbok style, bit of a balance. And I expect it's probably going to be like that to start with. But like I say, just the very presence of Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu and what he is capable of may just change the dynamic enough to make it feel different. I don't think it's going to be a wholesale departure. I think, as I said on a video yesterday, I think it was, South Africa have just got to win a, a rugby championship. They're the World Cup winners. They're the only side without a, a, a completely new coaching team. They've got new coaches in, in there and amongst it. They have got some new players, but for the most part, it's the same squad. And yeah, two World Cups, back to back, doesn't get better than that. But if they want to be regarded as the greatest team of all time, Aim for that third World Cup, sure, but deliver in between. Rugby championships. It would be crazy if come the next World Cup, if they end up winning that and they have more World Cups <laughs> wins than rugby championship wins. So they've picked a team to hit the ground running. Let's see how they go. I'm excited for the rugby championship to start. I'm just excited that 15 aside rugby is back, that international rugby is back. And as much as I say maybe players should play less, I don't like it when there's no rugby. It's, it's very nearly back. We'll have the other teams come in and w when all those are announced, I'll obviously bring you uh, videos building up to the weekend. Bring it on. Thank you for watching. Hit subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.